Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Okie dokie. A little unlucky. I turned the sound off though. Alright. Sounds good. Okay. Um, we'll start up a call after the video, and then if you have any questions, you can just ask me later. We'll just watch through this. Let me get my handy dandy marker. Okay, just gotta make sure it's working. Okay, so we're starting with Blitzcrank here. <clears throat> pretty standard, pretty standard invade. Ooh, oh, I dig it. <sighs> okay. So, one tip that I can give you is when you're invading and you see someone, if you're expecting them to flash, you should just hook them right away. You know, there could be that chance that they fuck up the flash. So the moment you see someone, you just throw that shit right away. I personally just find it way easier to um, force the summoner out. In this case, you did force the summoner, but there could have been that chance that, you know, Zack starts E and you guys are able to burst her before she dies. Also, don't hesitate to use summoner spells right away. I feel like that's one thing that a lot of low elo players tend to do is they hold on their summoner spells and it kind of misses out on opportunities to kill people and stuff like that or to get away from ganks. Okay, so this is good. You tanked um, two hits for him. That's really good, actually. So when you're... When you're um, tanking, or leashing the blue or red, you usually want to tank a couple hits for your jungler. Okay, so I already noticed um, a couple things here. So the moment you step in, okay, let's watch this again. Okay, so we know that this bot lane did not leash because they started a really weird path. So their jungler is going to be coming down bottom side. So their jungler started uh, on their blue, just from how how uh, they passed. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. I think they did start blue. I, I'm sorry, red. I think they did leash red. Because the way that they came a little late, this kind of information that you need to kind of get before they come to lane. So they did leash since they did come in here late. Now, Kog'Maw's trading 2v1. This is an opportunity for you to hook him, right? Because there's Soraka, there's no Soraka here. So to both of you guys would be able to shit on this guy and possibly have him blow summoners. So once you hook him, you ignite him right away and he's gonna be forced to run because he's gonna have to flash and he's probably gonna heal because it is low elo, people tend to do that right away. So that was an opportunity that you missed there also. You notice how he has his W on that gives him increased attack range and increased max percent health damage. So okay, this is good that you're walking up for pressure, but the fact that you're taking free damage like this kind of makes it so you can relieve pressure on the enemy end, right? The way that you want to go about this whole situation is if your Draven is here, you want to be parallel to him, right? The reason why I say that 
you should be parallel to him is so if he doesn't respond to you getting hit with damage that means you're taking damage for free and you're not returning on the enemy so i would highly suggest like trying to be a little close to him you know a little step maybe like one or two teemos in front of him that's a good hook but other than that you don't want to overstep Okay, so now that the second wave has come in, <clears throat> one tip that I can give you that's really important to do for laning phase is to be able to count when you're going to hit level 2. A lot of champions, a lot of champions get to level 2 power spike and when you get to that level 2 power spike, you can actually either try and force a 2v2 fight or zone them from creeps. So, the way that you want to count level 2 is here. I'm going to show you how to count to level 2. So when you're walking in, what you're going to need to do is kill these 6 minions. And then the second wave that comes in, the first 3 melee minions, or 2 melees and 2 casters, hits level 2 for you. And when you hit that level 2, you 100% have kill pressure on this Kog'Maw Sorokaline. Alright, nice. That was good. That was nice. Getting your Draven to kill. It's really good. So you want to help him shove this right now. You want to tag this cannon and you want to be hitting this melees. You, you want to try and get your target stacks on cannons as much as possible since that does give you the most amount of gold. This is a extremely risky dive. Would not. Oh, nice. I wouldn't recommend diving like that. With the creep wave, defending the Soraka, it's hard to hit a hook on her. And if Draven starts off with the dive, you guys don't have damage because he has to take the turret and he's going to be running most of the time, like you saw. So you gotta weigh out your options when you're looking for stuff like that. The best thing you could have done there is just push the wave and look to reset and get an item advantage. So you were able to kill the Kog'Maw, but you can't rely on your enemies being negligible like that. Because the higher elo you go, they're going to be taking more advantages of your mistakes. Try to chug your pot. You want to stay above 50% as much as possible in a melee matchup to range. If you're below 50, you pose no threat to the enemy. So had you reset on turret, you definitely would have been able to avoid dying right here. Okay, so your purchase is not bad. Getting more HP for laning is pretty good. I would definitely recommend going for mobility boots first. The reason why I would choose mobility boots over sightstone early is because Mobis gives you the pressure to roam mid as well as call your jungle down bottom. Since these guys won't be buying boots that early, you can actually just run at them, punch them in the air, and then hook them. With your jungler there, guaranteed kill on either one of them every single time. So Sightstone is good for getting vision and stuff like that, but for solo queue, your job essentially as a support is to make the enemies have a bad time. And how you do that is by fucking their mid laner and roaming. Whenever you get roams off mid, even just going over there on vision 
basically makes the enemy mid laner go, yo, support, where you at, dude? I need help here. I'm getting 2v1. And usually in lower elos, they get pretty pissed. Yeah, okay. So I'll go over runes and masters with you, phone microwave for Blitzcrank after this game. So this one example of why you should choose boots over Sightstone, this is a prime example. Had you had Moby boots, you would have been there to fuck Stead when he jumped on Ori. So stuff like that, you want to try and foresee. Not that the fact that Zed would all into Ori, but the fact that with the wave pushing in towards your mid laner, you had the opportunity to pull off that gank mid lane. Okay, that was a little unfortunate. He was able to 2v1 and they are pushing the wave back to you. So in our next session, Phone Microwave, I'm going to be teaching you about uh, wave manipulation. For for this video, I'm basically just going to be teaching you like the basics on how you should be playing melee matchups. Okay, so you notice in a lot of pro play, a lot of melee supports in this specific battle. So let's let's look at this real quick. You guys are both extremely low. So you see two low targets and you're extremely low as well. Now Zach is using his skills on the low targets and he's gonna get them really low. Now the problem with the fact of this play is, okay, you got the ignite off, but Soraka doesn't die. And not only that, but you need to be able to recognize that Shivana's bar, her rage dragon bar, whatever, is full. So with you not having your pull up, which is your primary damage ability, you should not be walking back in here. Zach already put himself in a position where he's gonna get fucked by Shivana. Anyway, 10 out of 10 times, he's gonna be dying in this situation unless he like ults and like flashes away or something so you you only having your your knock up is not worth it for you to be here right now especially with how low you are so it's good that you are chugging a potion in this skirmish but you're, you're not going to be able to do anything so this all goes to shit just because you went a little too close so instead of this being a 1-0 for the enemy, this ends up both of you dying. So I would say going into any ranked games, you want to have the mindset of you dying once, maybe twice in a game. That's it. That should be your mindset in every single game. If somebody's going to die, Right? If somebody's gonna die, it's not gonna be you, unless it's a really fed-ass carry. If your carries are not fed, fuck them. Your life over theirs. <laughs> this is how you're gonna improve a lot of qualities in your game, is just trying to avoid dying. I think it's like almost essential for any league player to be able to know what their limits are on the champions that they play. So if you can improve your skill on knowing your your limits on your champs, you'll definitely be able to evade death a lot more while still being able to output the most CC and damage that you can possibly give out as a great hook. Man, these, this enemy bot lane is like asleep at the wheel or something. You definitely should have tanked for that guy. Okay, so let me teach you 